and then on Expendables 3 we created a small extension because we were working on a lot of bigger uh, elements like uh, jeeps and land rovers and boats which you'll see a bit later so it's a temporary extension but it's a really nice little workshop that we have here and the next thing I'll show you is uh, the plane that we built for Expendables 2 which was a full-size copy of uh, a plane I got in Turkey, a seaplane that I got in Turkey, a bombardier it was. And uh, because we were doing a lot of stunts on the plane, we uh, couldn't have the real plane on the lake. As it turned out, the lake was too short to land the plane anyway. So we had to build a full-scale copy that could move under its own power uh, in order to allow the stunt guys to be able to do everything that they needed to do without having real propellers on the wings. Since the plane or the boat was 20 meters long and had a 28 meter wingspan and on water uh, we could get it up to 28 kilometers an hour which wasn't really that fast but it was fast enough to do the job. The company that did this for us was an outside contractor called View, De View Design and the way that we built the plane was um, they'd found a, uh, a drawing or a set of plans for somebody that built a 9 meter RC, radio controlled version of this. And basically what View Design did, which was very clever, is they just scaled up the drawings and built it exactly as you would a radio controlled plane. And so you see it really has just ribs exactly like a boat or an RC plane. Here was the engine in, in this part of the, the, in this section of the plane right down there, 600 horsepower as I mentioned. The pilot or operator was hiding behind the seat and behind the cockpit low down so that the camera wouldn't see him from the outside. And then he had a monitor and webcams on the wings to see where he was going, which was great. Over there is a full fiberglass mold of the speedboat that the Expendable 3's uh, use at the opening uh, in during the opening of the movie and uh, I was having the boat manufactured in Holland but because we didn't have a lot of pre-production we weren't sure that they were going to be ready on time we sent uh, some people some of my prop makers to Holland and they photographed and measured the boat as it was being built in Holland and then they came back and my team uh, built a full-size sculpture if you want of that boat and then we made a mold and from that mold we were able to pull exact duplicates of uh, this rigid inflatable boat that we could use in stunt work for example the boat was required to ramp out of the water and land on a moving truck and for that we didn't use the real boat because it's not that easy to control because it's two vehicles moving so we just had our lightweight fiberglass version on a cable rig and that was uh, better to control where it would end up and that's this here so here are two surviving examples and it looks like a rigid inflatable with the same paint job that we did on the actual boat but instead of this being air filled plastic it's solid fiberglass and it looked exactly like the real thing in fact there's a funny story where the first assistant director of second unit first saw them and did this and hurt his hands which made me laugh a little and then all of that the engines the engines were all just fiberglass copies to look like the engine that was on the real boat and I think it was a bit of a compromise for the film but I think it worked out well in the end so here we have uh, one of the expendable two Land Rovers that we converted uh, to use in expendables 3 one of the things we did is because I initially bought the Land Rovers out of the UK we actually converted this one to left-hand drive, which is not that difficult to do with a Land Rover, so that you know it would just look different from Expendables 2. And we redid some of the bodywork, and we obviously gave it a new paint job. And this paint job exactly matches the paint job that's on the new Expendables 3 plane that they have. Then here is an example of one of the six-wheel drive Land Rovers which were used in Expendables 2, not in this configuration. Uh, my workshop rebuilt this one to look uh, like something completely different for a film called Automata starring Antonio Banderas. And this was all done as per the specs of that film's production designer. Again, we used foam and fiberglass 
to build up body panels and to make this Land Rover look completely different. We rebuilt the roof and the sides and there you go, six wheel drive Land Rover. Well, I'll tell you the story. What happened was for Expendables 2, I needed to have six wheel drive Land Rover. And my initial thinking was, which is what the um, British military also has, they have a four wheel drive Land Rover that has a trailing non-functioning axle at the back here. They extend the body and they use those four-wheel drive, six-wheel Land Rovers for heavy loads. So the back axle simply does carrying more weight. And as I was doing the research on this, you know, I was a bit worried. I didn't know who was going to be driving them and we were going to do this conversion. Um, I was on YouTube just looking at, uh, you know, six-wheel drive Land Rovers and suddenly I come across this video where some crazy guy is driving this six-wheel drive Land Rover through the mud somewhere in I didn't know where. And as he comes past camera, on the side of the Land Rover, I see the name Portal Rover with a phone number. So I pick up the phone and Hugh answers the owner of Portal Rover. And I said, listen, what about that six-wheel drive Land Rover I just saw on YouTube? And he says, yeah, I've built that. And I said, is it six-wheel drive or is it four-wheel drive with a trailing axle? He says, no. It's completely rebuilt the frames from the frame up and even the frame that's the innovation it's all full six wheel drive and i said do you have it and he said yes and i said okay well i'm buying that one and he says oh and i'm making a second one and i said oh i'm buying that one too and while you're at it um, please find me four four wheel drive land rovers so he did that he came down with one of these on a trailer from the UK and all of these were sent from the UK and then what he did is because he's a bit of a genius he um, played with the, the engine management system so because I was a bit worried that the diesels weren't going to give us enough uh, speed because we had a big chase and chasing through the street and driving up this building where they built the special ramp but you know he played with the ECU and these things fly they're rockets they're really really nice here is another nice story for Expendables 2. We wanted specifically something really interesting, something new, not just a motocross bike. And we found a company called Rocom. Uh, the owner is a guy called Tom Blaze. And he has a company that uh, builds on the tradition of the original inventor of this. This is a two-wheel drive motorcycle. And it has, I don't know, maybe seven or eight horsepower. It's not very powerful. It's not very comfortable, but it'll take you pretty much anywhere you want to go. The innovative thing is that it's chain driven, the front wheel. So here you can see the two wheel drive mechanism that drives the front wheel. So power is transferred into this chain that then comes down onto this cog and onto this big cog here that's on the wheel. And um, as I say, it's not the fastest or most comfortable motorcycle in the world, but it gets you where you need to go. And one of the other things that's quite special about this is the weight, the weight of the motorcycle in relation to the tires allow you to float this motorcycle over streams and over lakes. You can't ride it, but you know, you can just plonk it in the water and off you go. So very versatile for hunters, uh, versatile for farmers. And Tom Blaze of Rocon uh, was very forthcoming because um, the company is not a very big company and I was hoping to get these motorcycles for free, as you would, you know. But uh, that wasn't possible, but he gave them to me at a really great price. He included a lot of extras and yeah, thanks to Tom Blaze of Rocon. We had to, uh, you know, come up with some vehicles that uh, were feasible to be uh, in Mogadishu. And uh, the production designer came up with these designs, which we then implemented. This is, uh, was a Mitsubishi Pajero or Montero Jeep, a three liter six cylinder V6, quite a powerful little car. And we just basically cut the top half of it off in order to create a machine gun platform. And we also wanted the vehicles to look kind of, you know, like they've been around for a while. And, uh, and as you can see, again, of everything we needed two, because if one vehicle fails or it's in a stunt, we can just pull another identical vehicle. So you have these two Toyotas that are identical, and then you have these two Mitsubishis that are identical. Um, over here, we've got uh, the KTM motorcycles. 
that were used in Expendables 3 for what we called the block sequence. And again, um, wishing to express my thanks to KTM because again, we needed six motorcycles to do all of the stunts and KTM sponsored us with the use of three motorcycles which were returned to them and, uh, and then we bought at a really great price. They gave us a really, really great price. We bought these three 250 two-stroke KTMs that were changed you know, to be a bit more military. And then we did something uh, which I'm kind of proud of. My, uh, my sculptors in the workshop, for some of the stunts, we needed a trials bike in order to go up staircases and make very tight turns. So what we did is uh, we sculpted these body panels to look similar to what's on the bigger KTMs in order to be able to you know, start a shot with the KTM and it kind of goes up towards a staircase. And then when it needs to be riding on the walls of the staircase, we take out the KTM. Uh, another, uh, I think it was a French stunt rider, he would then jump onto what was actually his competition trials bike and he would do the piece where the bike is going on the wall and hopefully the action will be so quick that the audience won't notice that it's not the KTM doing the stunt but it's actually a trials bike doing the stunt. So I think that was fairly successful. I'm, when you see them next to each other, there is a big difference but I'm hoping that you know the audience will never see them side by side so hopefully we'll get away with it. And the stunt riders were Red Bull riders most of them, and then a lot of uh, Bulgarian stunt riders that uh, just did spectacular work on these bikes. And I think the sequence will be very exciting because it's just motorcycles flying, huge jumps, 20, 30 meter jumps. So I think it'll be interesting and they'll be chasing tanks and driving over tanks, and, but you'll have to wait until August. <laughs>